Welcome to video 35 in series 3 and in this video I'll type up the game manager references script and it's a vital part of the S3 systems. Okay, so I'll make the new script, call it game manager references, open it up. Okay, as usual. Place it in the namespace, S3. Okay, now in this script, you won't get to see its application till a long time later, but what it does, all its job is, is to just keep some really important references that lots of other scripts need to be able to do stuff. And those references are, what is the player tag? what is the enemy tag, and what is the player game object. So these three items are what this script keeps a reference to, and um, they're vital. Now I also make use of uh, global variables in this script, uh, and you can't type in the global variable in the inspector, so what I first do is I just have a public string, and I just type in uh, the string inside of the uh, inspector and then I assign it to the global variable. So in this case it's going to be called player tag and I'll type this in the inspector. What is the player tag name? And then I have another thing, a public static. This is how you define a global variable, public static string. And I just write it a little bit different, player tag. And I'll assign this inside of this script. Then I'll have another one, public string enemy tag. And then public static string enemy tag with the underscore before it. And uh, lastly, I'll have another global variable, uh, which is public static game object. And this is going to be uh, the player. So that way I've kept a reference to the player and then lots of other scripts can then just go and just access the a global variable of what is the player and it's a unique thing so a global variable you can only have one of them so they can only be one player tag variable another script can't also have this uh, global variable uh, and so in that way it's uh, it's easy and I don't have to have the other scripts find the game manager or access the game manager references script to then uh, get what is the player tag or what is the player I don't have to do that. So that's the benefit of global variables, but otherwise I avoid using them. Okay, so I won't have a start and update method. Instead, I'll have avoid on enable so that it happens fast. This stuff gets set quickly. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll have a check. I'll check whether the player has actually written anything in the inspector. If it's just an empty string there, then that's a problem because something must be written there, otherwise the S3 systems are not going to work. So I'll put here, if player tag is an empty string, then I need a warning message. So debug.log, a uh, warning log rather, so log warning. And what is that message? Um, I should say, please type in the name of the player tag in the game manager references uh, inspector slot. It's getting a bit long, so I might just uh, take that to the next line and just uh, one moment, just put a space there so it looks right. So please type in the name of the player tag in the game manager references. Uh, slot in the inspector or else the GTGD S3 systems will not work. So it's a vital um, bit of code that needs to be there. Oh, and of course I need to have uh, my brackets. Uh, that's better. Okay, and I will do exactly the same thing for the enemy tag. I'll say here, if enemy tag, if it's empty in the inspector, uh, then I'll type in here, if the enemy tag, okay, good. Uh, then I need to actually assign it. So I need to say, uh, player tag 
is equal to player tag, what has been written in the inspector. Same for the enemy tag. Enemy tag. Okay. And then lastly, the player, is, which is game object, is equal to game object. Defined game object with tag. Uh, what is that tag? Of course, it's the player tag. So now a reference will be kept to the player as well. Okay, so I'm pretty sure that's all I need. So I might as well go over to Unity, go over to the game manager, drop this on. There you can see the two public variables, player tag and enemy tag, waiting for me to type something in. When whatever the values of these are, they will then get assigned to the uh, global variables. You ca you cannot see the global variables in the inspector, so you can't type in stuff for them there, uh, which makes sense because they're I guess they're global and accessible uh, to all scripts immediately. And uh, I guess the player as well is then just found using the player tag. Right. So if I hit play now. There we go. So I've had a problem. Let's have a look what it says. Please type in, yep, in the inspector or else the systems will not work. Yep, another warning message. And then another one too because I'm trying to assign something and it's not defined. So let me have a look at that. Because the <laughs> empty tag, of course, an empty string, there's no such thing as a tag with uh, that. So let's have a look at that. It can't find a game object with uh, the empty tag or with an empty string because there's no such thing. There's no there's no such thing as a tag that's uh, an empty string in the game uh, in the system. So that's all right. So that's working, and uh, the solution is pretty simple. So if I forgot to do that, so it's a critical bit of uh, information that I must have. And if I'd forgotten to do it, well, all this will then remind me, hey, something is wrong. Now, I already have those tags. So there's the player tag and the enemy tag. So I'll just type them here. So player, enemy, OK. Now this time it'll be OK. There we go. No errors, no nothing. Uh, and now there's also a reference to the player game object itself. Perfect. So that's pretty much it for this video. We've implemented a pretty important script, but you won't really see the application of it till much later. Anyway, thanks for watching and keep moving onwards.